where you can find your co-founder. 48 companies that have raised more than 10 million dollars each. Should you? Only 22% of companies had three or more founders. Hipster, hacker, and hustler. Why I'm telling you about my wife? We all are aware of this old African proverb. If you want to go faster, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. While this holds true for our personal lives, for our families, it has own significance for startups as well. There is enough data and surveys done that support how working with a good founding team improves startups' chances to succeed. While it's beneficial to have a sound founding team, it comes with its own risks too. Please remember about this. One of the most common reasons why startups fail is the difference or conflicts among co-founders or founding partners. Therefore, it's extremely, extremely important to exercise caution when choosing a founding team. So let's talk together about this issue. Hello, my name is Dmitry Bonder and this is a channel for prospective business millionaires strategies, tactics, handful and practical advice, personal experience, my personal experience, and interview with the business owners you can find on my channel. Please consider subscribing to get new updates and valuable business content. Let's move forward to their first million dollars. Do you really need a co-founders? We are often told that starting a startup on your own is a madness, madness. There are thousands of articles out that you need a co-founder. Probably solid advice by data from thousands of startups it could be a little bit different. Crunchbase is a kind of website where you can find a lot of information about companies and a website shows a different side of the story. More than a half of startups with an exit did so with a single founder. The average number that I found on a cringe base is 1.72 founders. I'm personally owner of four companies that I found starting from 2003 to 2015. In 50% of cases I was solo founder. Was it good or bad? I personally don't know. Sometimes it was really too hard to solve all problems on my own, but when I survived after all these years, I have a major share of my business under my control. So there are always pros and cons. Okay, let's check some numbers. My deep dive into the Crunchbase API gave me a total of 7,003 48 companies that have raised more than 10 million dollars each. Of course, some of the companies were subsequently have failed, but I figured out it was a good number to help uh, whittle down the number of companies in my data set. The finding was fascinating. It turns out that almost half of the companies successful in raising funds did so with a solo, sole founder just under the sort of the companies had two founders and only 22% of companies had three or more founders. The average number of founders in this data set was 1.85 per startup. I will show the graph and you can check these numbers. It's really amazing. Look at this graph. This graph shows the number of startups that have raised more than 10 million from investors, broken down by the number of founders associated with the company. So you can start company alone. Should you? It's a really hard question. You can decide on your own. While the above data from Crunchbase suggests that it's possible to raise money and secure uh, an exit as a solo founder, that doesn't mean it's a fantastic, fantastic idea. In my personal opinion, based on my 15-year-old business experience, building a company with two, three co-founders is probably the way to go. What the data suggests? 
However, is that you fail to get a co-founding team together, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that uh, you will fail in future. Let's be frank, there is no denying that starting and running a startup is an extremely stressful endeavor. Having a team working together and challenging each other along the way means that a startup can be more than the sum of its parts. It's really important to remember that it's a different parts. 2 plus 2 plus 2 that can give you 10. There is also a large amount of anecdotal evidence suggesting that a number of investors will reject solo founders by value of not having a bigger founding team or be a lot less likely to invest without a robust team. For example, David McClure, founder of 500 startups, one of the most famous accelerator in the world, suggests that being accepted to 500 startups accelerator is possible but not common. While Paul Graham, a Y Combinator founder, goes so far as to judge that solo funded startups are the number one mistake that kills every startup. Which incidentally didn't stop Y Combinator and other top shelf accelerators from accepting a number of founder startups through the years, including some big success story like Peeble, Eric uh, Makovsky and uh, Dropbox uh, founder Drew Houston. So they actually was only one founder. Okay, let's check other important part of building successful founding team. Where you can find your co-founder? It's a great question, but it's a great challenge to get people interested. Come on the board and at the pre-revenue stage because of degree of uncertainty involved. But let me give you a remind a few things to keep in mind. Keep your objective and vision clear. It will help you to find a co-founder. Despite a great idea, many startups founders lack a clear vision about what problem they're solving for customers, what they would like to achieve. Getting your vision clear about these important aspects are critical, not just attract, attracts a great co-founder or founding team, but also to know whether they share the vision and belief that you have for your startup. Try to bring diverse skill set on the board. Your co-founder or founding team skills should complement yours that would not just help you with a great start, but even attract investors later who look for diverse talent in the team and their ability to find solutions for really complicated tasks or problems. Nonetheless, the candidate's work experience, industry experience, intelligence, credibility, communication, personality, and most importantly, patient or fire in their belly can't be ignored. The question number two that you may have, where can I find a co-founder? Use your personal network. I found my wife when I was a sales manager in one company. I look for my wife everywhere. Why I'm telling you about my wife, you can ask me. Well, the same principles apply when you are looking for co-founders. The best bet to locate the desired talents is your personal network. Try to find out who can help you with the referrals you need and tell them what you are building and what, what qualities you are looking for in co-founder. Watch for people that can personally recommend the candidates to you. Ask everyone about this. That's what I did when I, uh, when I found my first company. Look beyond your network. Found out peers in startup community and network with them. This is a possibility if you are spending time in co-working space, for example. It could be a good idea, by the way, for you. Attending any startup uh, meetings or part of startup forums on social media. Networking, whether online or offline, can put you in touch with like-minded people and help develop meaningful relations to eventually come across the right part. This know the person well before the wet look. It's 
very important. It's really hard to overemphasize this rule. Know your partner before mutually agreeing to their professional tie-up. Go on several dates before you decide to enter into a formal marriage. Over the time, you might realize that they don't share the same ideology or, or complementary style of working. I wish someone gave me this advice in 2014 when I jumped in uh, into a new virtue with one of my ex-partners. Unfortunately, I failed and it was really, really painful, guys. Okay, what co-founder's role do you need in your company? This is a sort of question you may have when you are checking this video. Let me answer very quickly. Hipster, hacker and hustler. Okay, who are these guys? The hipster. He or she is in charge of making product marketable. A hipster can help you identify trends, market your product. For example, Johnny Ive. Have you heard about Johnny Ive? Guys, check your iPhones, iPad. Johnny is the chief design officer of one of the world's most revolutionary technology companies, Apple. Held as the creative genius behind Apple's greats, greatest products and the spiritual partner of the late Steve Jobs, Johnny's artistic Proves has seen him net a cool $130 million. Not bad for modern day artists. The next role you have to know and you have to find the right co-founder co for this role is a hustler. Who is a hustler? A hustler has no sympathy for excuses and a little patience either. They are a type of person who can sell you product. Hustlers are the key to a selling product to the masses. And their way with the words could get anyone on the board with the vision. In fact, they pretty much stick to whatever fleeting thought, idea or resolute decisions they ever make. Often conversationally gifted and, uh, and charming, the hustler has a, an access to a network of people. That's why they are selling the product. The ultimate hustler, the great example of this role, is a Sheryl Sandberg, the chief operating officer, CEO of Facebook. Sheryl Sandberg is the most business tycoon and inspiring figure for young women. Starting her journey as economics graduate from Harvard University, Sheryl quickly climbed the ranks and was awarded placement in high-profile institutions, for example, such as uh, Department of Treasury and Google. In late 2007, Sheryl met Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg at the Christmas party and was soon offered a position at the company's CEO. That's how networker skills works. And the hacker. Hackers are your typical tech heads who routinely appear more machine than a human, you know, all this kind of person who are doing and programming something. With an egg for spreadsheets, data and all things logistics based, the hacker is in charge of arguably the hardest tasks, creating the actual product. Not one for idle chat, a hacker's razor sharp focus uh, can have them taping away on the laptop for hours with the silence broken only by the occasional grunt of frustration. When a hacker does choose uh, to talk about the product, it will undoubtedly be in lingo nobody else understands. The ultimate hacker you could know is a Bill Gates. Bill Gates was the first introduced to computers at the age of 13 when a local mother's club used a garage sale uh, proceeds to buy a teletype model 33 uh, or this kind of you know hardware for, for, for his school. In what may be the nerdiest excuse for suspension ever Gates along with three other precocious teens what called exploding bugs and operating system to, to get more computer time. So it's a typical typical uh, hacker. 
Other noteworthy escapes include modifying computer cords to enroll himself in a girls-only classes and hijacking an airport control panel with, uh, when he missed a flight. I hope you find this video helpful and now you are better prepared to build your founding team or at least escape some basic mistakes. Please press like, thumb up and support me on Patreon platform. I will include the link in the description. If you want more and more valuable videos, how to make the first million dollars in a business. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon and peace out.